What's going on my fellow refilters? I am Jake Adams and all day we've been shooting a brand new format, the video series on how to build your own miniature reef aquarium from scratch. We've been doing this in one day. We put together the stand, we've assembled the aquarium. This is a Red Sea Max Nano. It's got everything included. The Red Sea Reef Lead 50. We've got a built-in top off, built-in protein skimmer, um, and the Life Rock from Carib Sea Aquascape the perfect foundation for corals. Now normally when you're starting up a tank, one of the very paramount things that all reef keepers should really take into consideration is to take it slowly. You should add a few corals a week, maybe one, two or three each week. You kind of don't really need to cycle for corals. <laughs> kind of don't really need to cycle for corals. The point is you want to take a slope, but we have a different plan in mind because we have an extensive coral collection here at the Reef Builder Studio. I've been collecting corals specifically for this build um, for months now. So let's go take a look at the uh, rarely seen Reef Builders coral flats and see what corals are going to go in this tank. All right, so some corals that I really for sure want to pull it in this tank. We've got the Prism Favia, Sagoniastria, kind of a medium light, medium to high light coral. The Acan Pachycepta, might as well be an orange lobo. So we're definitely going to grab that guy. What else did I have in mind? Oh yeah, we have some very, very nice uh, long polyp leathers here that I collected from a shipwreck in Solomon Islands. Green polyp leather. And yeah, let's go ahead and grab those and I'm gonna put them in the tank. We'll just rest them on the bottom. All right, so we have a long polyp leather. Oh, that's coming with us. We're gonna grab a nice green polyp leather. Oop, there's a good one. That's from this tank. I'm gonna add... It's really hard shopping in your own coral tanks. Yeah, you know, even though I have all the corals and all the things, we don't want to add too much at once. So this is a nice favia, prism favia, the Acan pachycepta. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty good. Now we're gonna go to the second coral flat where I have earmarked some different corals. I still have to keep finding them. Okay, so we're gonna do this small finger leather right here. Nice little sinularia. Bring him a little bit closer. Ooh, yes, we have some nice little chunks of green star polyps on river stones. Those are nice. I'm gonna put them over there. And what else do we have in here? I'm, oh yeah, gotta flex a little bit. Gotta flex a little bit. My friend Zach Lynn from Ocean Pets hooked it up with a nice triple headed gold torch coral. We're gonna put you right over here. You got this guy, and we have, this is a nice little green trachophilia I picked up from ACI, thanks Chris. This is gonna be a nice little eye catcher. And yes, we're almost there, so I'm gonna have to come around that side. And then two corals that I picked out specifically for this build. We got a small frag of Duncan Osamia right there, and nice, classic Australian Blastomusa. And you know what? You know what, while we're at it, I really think this Acan Echinata is gonna be kind of perfect. Nice little minty green Acan Echinata. This is an indestructible coral, grows into anything. So let's take these over to the cake now. You guys, I'm actually super excited. We were, we've been working at this so hard all freaking day. And now that we're at the aquascaping part and I get to just pick out some corals to put in there, it's really starting to come home how much fun this is gonna be. So last but definitely not least, so we're gonna add only one, the second euphilia after the torch, but we're not gonna rely just on euphilias to fill up that tank. And one more coral I want, you know what? We're gonna go 
with a nice chunk of this tiger striped candy coral. I've been growing this since 2000, y'all. Sorry, 2001. This has been in my aquarium family for virtually 20 years. So let's go get this in the tank. Then it's gonna be time to start scaping. There's a lot of corals in there and I could put a bunch in here, but I think we have the perfect mix of corals. I am capable of doing a lot of things. One thing I can't do is aquascape this tank creatively with the corals and tell you all about it at the same time. So what we're gonna do for this video is I'm gonna aquascape and put all the corals where they need to be. And then right after that montage, I'm gonna explain why I put each coral where it goes. So follow along with me for the funnest part of doing a major reef tank in one day and it's gonna look amazing. As we've been at this all day, we have a great selection of corals in here. Uh, they found a place on the aquascape almost right away, but there's no sense in showing you these corals as they're freshly handled, freshly closed up. So we're gonna give them overnight. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna come in here bright and early and point out the corals that we put in here. And then we're gonna wrap up the series by putting some fish in and talking about the medium term maintenance of an aquarium like this. So until tomorrow morning. All right, you guys, we worked so hard all day yesterday to put together this tank, wrapped it up by aquascaping it with real life corals, walked in this morning to check everything and just really, really blew us away. It's just such a great looking little uh, assortment of corals. There's still room to put more corals in there, but even if you build a reef tank in one day, you don't have to finish in one day. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna take a quick tour of the corals in this tank with a little bit of description of where they are and why we put them there. So for our one day tank build, we included about a dozen hardy, commonly available and affordable corals that were suitable for a wide range of aquarium conditions. As we discussed in our aquascaping segment, we, we like to divide the portions of the aquarium into separate thirds. So we've got a bottom third, a middle third, and the top third. Let's start with the bottom. So on the bottom, we put a couple of very hardy and forgiving euphilia corals. These add a lot of flow, a lot of movement into the aquarium, and a very nice contrast on the sand. Still in the bottom third area, we have an open brain trache, trachophilia here, and a small cluster of other open brains, which are generally considered to be lower light corals. In the center, we have another large orange open brain and some candy coral. These are very adaptable corals that can go in a wide range of uh, places but one of the most deliberate placement is probably the soft corals we've placed right around the outsides of the aquascape so that they could benefit from some extra water flow. So there's a finger leather here on the right, we've got a Kenya tree here on the left, a, a pin, pinhead toadstool leather there with the polyps all extended and a green polyp leather that hasn't quite yet opened up. And finally, crowning off this uh, coral aquascape is a very affordable, common Duncan up Samia coral. Its polyps are opening up more and more every day, and it's going to be a very nice cap to this overall coral aquascape. 
Guys, we could not be any more thrilled with how our one day tank build series is coming along. Yesterday, we added about a, a dozen affordable, hardy, colorful corals to this aquarium, and it's coming along real great. But we have a couple more topics to really cap off this aquarium. We're gonna add some fish and talk about some of the immediate maintenance that a tank like this requires in order to stay happy, successful, thriving, etc. So if you don't wanna miss the next video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You have any questions, now's the time to put them down below and we'll catch you on the next video.